Well, good morning, good morning, and again I say good morning, saints of God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I for one will rejoice. I'm going to rejoice, I'm going to be glad in it, and I suggest you do the same, because God has spared you and I, and today is Faith Friday, August 7th. We made it uh, to the end of another work week. It's Faith Friday, August 7th, 2020, and we're yet alive to see each other's faces. That's a blessing in and of itself. First and foremost, to my fellowship family, we greet you today, and then certainly to all of our friends that tune in with regularity, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Thankful um, that you tune in each day, and I'm hoping and praying um, that this morning you're ready for your morning meditation because you've already done your self-check. I'm following up, hoping and praying that you've done a good job self-checking. I'm just checking up on your checking, hoping you're doing well, mind, body, and soul. Now listen, right outside of my window, there's a fella um, sitting on the ground on a blanket. Uh, he's got a guitar. He's playing and he's singing and I'm thinking I got to do my morning meditation and I'm hearing him so I know you're gonna hear him too I want to say so bad if you don't shut up I got stuff to do but then you know I decided okay let the man make his joyful noise if you hear it disregard it we're here we're gonna do what we gotta do <laughs> go to Matthew chapter 19 I want to look at one verse today for consideration and it's a a powerful passage, powerful verse, uh, really is challenging. I've never preached it before, um, but it's interesting. So I wanted to look at it today. Matthew, tw Matthew 19, and the verse I want to look at is verse 26. Matthew 19, 26. This is how it reads. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Now on the surface, since that, of course, uh, is no provocative statement because we who know God understand he's omnipotent. He's all powerful. There's nothing he can't do. Um, there's nothing too hard for him. But in the context of this passage, uh, I can see why the disciples were perplexed because the preceding verse says the disciples were uh, amazed saying, well, who can be saved? Here's the context. There's a young fellow that comes to Jesus, a young man, um, and he, he's desiring to be saved. He says, what do I have to do? Jesus gives him uh, a list of things that need to happen. Um, then he says, well, I've done all of that. He lists the things that he's done. Uh, he said, I don't steal. I don't commit adultery. Um, I don't bear false witness. I honor my mother. If I do all of those things, what do I need to do? Jesus says, okay. Go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. man wrestles with that and ultimately he walks away dejected defeated and then um jesus turns to his disciples and he says to them verily i say unto you it'll be easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to be saved and the disciples have this quizzical puzzle dejected and defeated look and say, well, who, who, who's going to be saved? Jesus says, he beholds them. The Bible says he looked at them. He senses what's going on with them. And he says, listen, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Here's what's key and here's what blessed me. Jesus looked at this 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 young man that was rich and he saw something bigger than what the naked natural eye could see. The naked natural eye saw a young man who had it all together and has dotted every I and crossed every T. 
But Jesus was able to see what was wrong with the fellow. He was connected to his riches and that would prohibit him from selling out totally to God. And so seeing and discerning that Jesus picked out the one thing that he needed to do and that sale, uh, all that he had and get rid of that connection that would prohibit him from total devotion to God. Then Jesus turns to his disciples and sees it. He sees that that's too much for them to understand. They're, they're upset. They're, they're wondering. They're quizzical. They're defeated. And Jesus is able to see what they don't even say. And thus he gives them an analogy. What we see before us, this, this camel entering through the eye of a needle, is just Jesus discerning what they need to understand as well. What they need to understand is his abilities far trump their understanding of what's practical. God's power is bigger than our practicality. And if they're going to follow Jesus, they need to understand uh, that he sees on a whole nother level as well. We know that they're troubled about it because in that 27th verse, Peter follows up and said, we, we've left everything. We've forsaken everything to follow you. What do we get out of the deal? And the comfort that he gives those disciples is the comfort that he gives us that no matter what we see and think to be impossible when we're following him all things are possible we've just got to understand how powerful uh the powerful individual that we're following really is how powerful our our high priest is how how good our God is and how able he is to do anything but fail. We've got to understand who it is that we're really following. His power defies practicality. And, and to conceive of a camel fitting through the eye of a needle is totally impractical if you're operating on, on, on a carnal level. A spiritual level that we've got to operate on is a level that's so far beyond that which uh, humans can embrace by way of understanding. When we follow God, we've got to understand that his ways are not our ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Um, he, he's, he's so um, progressed beyond anything that is in the realm of practicality that anything is possible with him. That's the mindset that he wants every believer to have. That blessed me because saints of God, I need to understand as a believer that what I see on a daily basis that may look like it can't be done when I cast it as a care onto the Lord, he can fix it. That, that, that's all I got today. That blew my mind. Um, with men, there are some things that are impossible because um, our abilities are limited. Right now, killing this corona situation, getting a hold of it seems to be impossible with men. But thank God, with God, all things are possible. Um, we may be at our uh, wits ends as it relates to what we should do and what human hands can handle. There are some practical ways that have been um, shared that can decrease uh, the spread of the coronavirus, but ultimately only God can eradicate it altogether. With men, some things are impossible, but with God, the scriptures tell us and experience has taught me all things are possible. Listen, let's pray. Uh, and let's prepare for a great weekend, uh, blessing God that all things are truly possible when we trust in him. Father, in the strong name of Jesus, we come before you. We're grateful and we're thankful for this, another day's journey. We recognize uh, that it's by your grace and your mercy that we're still alive. We're thankful, oh God, that you've kept us throughout the duration of this work week. And we're confident. Uh, that as we tackle this weekend, uh, we'll do so under the holy and righteous hands that keep us on a daily basis. God, right now, um, our prayer 
is that you would continue to cause us to trust you even when we can't trace you. When we don't deem that things are possible, help us to understand that in human hands, there are some technical impossibilities, but in the hands of our God, nothing is too hard. We bless you now and we thank you. Um, and we pray now in the name of Jesus that um, when we go through the remainder of this weekend, uh, we can continue uh, to trust you and look into the hills from which cometh our help. Bless now, God, each and every individual under the sound of my voice and continue, God, to hold us in the hollow of your hand. And when all is said and done, God, we'll give your name, the praise, the glory and the honor forever. And all of God's people said, amen. Listen, as always, um, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and give you peace as you shelter this weekend in place and you shelter in peace. Don't forget to tune in this coming Sunday uh, to our broadcast at 1045 Sunday morning on plat the platforms that we broadcast on YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page. And make sure um, that if you're locally, you're here locally in Fresno, you tune in to AM 1550 at 9 AM to catch the worship service. Uh, and until we see each other again, uh, we'll talk to you. You take care. Be blessed. Peace.